Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this 17th, Tuesday the 17th of March. And uh, welcome. Listen, this virus that we're dealing with, this is a level 4 pathogen. It's not to be taken lightly. It can... Uh, it can live on surfaces for a long time. And, you know, I watched some videos last night and I saw uh, them doing uh, drive through testing in the United States for this pathogen. And uh, I saw one girl in particular, she had a face shield on and it came down to around her chin. But it was uh, it was kind of like the face shields that they wear, welders wear, you know. Uh, and she didn't have a mask on. She had the face shield on. But, you know, there's a gap between the face shield of about three inches between it and your face, you know, and the air flows in around it. Uh, and she didn't even have a mask on. She she had gloves on, and she had one of those uh, those tunics that they wear, you know, either blue or white color tunics. And I think she had a blue one. And it was film footage coming out from uh, one of the news networks showing them doing the drive-through testing. Anyway, she was walking up to the car window, you know, and... and doing, I guess, swabbing the guy, you know, they put a swab up their nose or whatever, you know, to, to, to get a sample to test, you know, uh, and I thought to myself, hey, you know what, uh, we're dealing with a level four pathogen here, you know, and what you really need for a level four pathogen is you need a pressurized hazmat suit, you know, and so I seen other nurses that are doing these tests too, these drive-through tests, and they're wearing a uh, an N95 mask. Well, they've already told us that this virus is a smaller micron particle than the masks, you know. And so, even though even the woman that was wearing the mask is she fully protected from a level four pathogen? It's it's dubious. Now, we're going to move on and talk about something else about this uh, that, I, that I particularly want to talk about is, okay, you got the drive-through testing. Why are the people there? Why are they waiting in the line to get tested? It's because they're feeling unwell. Maybe they got a head cold. Maybe they got the flu. Or maybe they have COVID-19. Uh, you might have a lineup of 20 people there driving through with their cars. I got one big question about this, and I hope everybody is listening will will share this video because this is a very important question that I have. Okay, say the first guy drives up. He's sick. He's got a fever, whatever. Say he has the COVID. You know, they go and they swab him, and they, they tell him that they'll get in contact with him, you know, uh, or whatever. You know, he gets the test, you know. And the nurse there, now, she's just swabbed him. She's reached down into the car, and she's put her hands down near his face to do the swab test. Perhaps she's even touched his face with those gloves that she has on. Now, the question I have to ask is a very important question. After that initial guy is tested, the next guy drives up, okay? And he thinks he's got COVID, but he hasn't. He's just got the cold, head cold. Okay? Now, she's going to swab him. Is she going to reach in that car window with those same gloves on? Is she going to touch the swabbing stick with those same gloves on that she had in the guy that had the COVID? The first guy? Because the second guy hasn't got it yet. Okay? But they're going to take that swab and they're going to stick it up his nose. I'm going to tell you the quickest way to catch COVID is it to have it inserted into your nose. So the big question I'm asking here is, is do they decontaminate each time after they take a test or do they test and then do the next person in the next car that's driving up? This is what I want to know. And I think this is a very important question. And I think it needs to be answered because if they're not doing this properly, 
and instead of instead of just testing, they're going to be spreading it, the disease, instead of just testing the disease. If this is not done properly, because this is a level four pathogen. This is the honey badger virus. This is not to be taken lightly. Okay? That's what I got to say about that. Now, uh, you know, it looks like this virus is moving extremely rapidly through the population. We got community spread. Here in Canada, we got community spread. I would assume they have community spread in the United States as well. Uh, the virus is moving extremely rapidly. I don't think this situation is going to last all that long. Taking a look at Chris Martinson's work, he says the virus every 14 days is expanding by the power of 10. Did a little bit of math on my calculator, you know. And uh, according to his calculations, it's not going to be long at all before this virus has, has gave the human race herd immunity. Because it's going to spread to everyone just about. You know, because it's such a it's such a hard virus to contain. It's it's extremely hard. And you know, when they really needed to do all this testing was when they wanted to really control the virus to find out who has it and then do contract tracing. It's always like the virus is a little bit ahead of them. Now at this point, probably it'd be a better thing to switch over to damage control because you're getting long in the tooth in the testing side of the whole thing. I mean, if, if everybody in the country's got it, what's the point of testing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so at that point, you got to do damage control because this thing, the reason why it spreads so fast is very simple. It's called asymptomatic carriers. And you have asymptom you also have asymptomatic uh, spreaders. Now, most of the people that are asymptomatic are not as contagious as the people that are showing symptoms. You know? But that doesn't mean that the asymptomatics are not contagious at all. That just means they're probably not as contagious as a person who has symptoms because they would have a, a higher uh, virus load, you know, in, in their system. Uh, and this virus has a long incubation period. And so what you have is by the time you see one initial case, you probably have 100 people out there who are asymptomatic already. And they're going to develop into sickness later. You know, so this is a desperately hard virus to try to stop. Uh, but because it's spreading so fast and moving so fast, it's going to burn itself out really fast as well on the other side of this, you know. And we're coming into the worst part now, in my estimation. The worst part is, is, is when it starts to really expand out into the general population and make everyone sick, you know, and the hospitals start to really fill up with people you know that's the worst part of it and that doesn't last long uh, it's going to cause a lot of havoc in the next number of months in the next few months probably starting in about a month there's going to be a lot of havoc caused by it and that's probably going to continue for a couple more months after that uh, I'll tell you, the virus is very likely to peak in uh, anywhere between uh, 8 and 16 weeks or so, you know, uh, because it's spreading so fast. And so at a certain point, uh, the testing becomes, and also another thing I wanted to say is these numbers that you're seeing for the virus, this virus is on an exponential, exponential function. And they can only test as fast as they can test through the tests, right? And they can only, they're also limited by the amount of tests that they have. And the virus is moving past them. In other words, the virus is accelerating in the amount of people that have it so quickly that they can't test them all. And they're only, 
these numbers that you're seeing of how many people have the virus, like when you go to these different sites, you know, and they, they display the numbers for you, how many people have the virus, that is limited by how many people they can test at this point. And the virus is stepped beyond that. It's in an exponential function. And so the amount of people that really have the virus and the amount of people that they're showing that they've done the test for and who officially have the virus are two different numbers. In other words, the people that have been tested and have been recognized as having the virus is one number. And the people who actually have the virus is another number and they can't keep up. And so the numbers that are being reflected are, are no way an indicative sign of how many people have the virus. Next thing you're gonna see is, is you're gonna see an awful lot of sick people. That's what you're gonna see next. That's what's coming in two, three weeks, maybe a month. You're going to see a lot of sick people. Try to avoid them. And the reason why is, is because if you get right close to them and you get into that virus and you get a big load of it, then you're probably going to come down with it quicker and you're going to be sicker than if you're very careful. If you're very careful, you're probably only going to get a small load of the loading of the virus. If, if any, you might, might even be able to escape it, possibly if you're extremely careful. Uh, but you're going to, you're going to not going to be as sick because you'll get a smaller amount of the virus in you and it'll take longer for the virus to multiply, thereby giving your immune system a little bit more time to respond, you know, and an immune system response, any virus out there, I don't care what virus it is, they all mean to kill you when you catch a virus, even the, 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 the weakest little cold. Your immune system is the only thing that protects you. Do you remember those movies they used to make with the boy in the bubble? That's because he had a weak immune system. And anything out there could kill him. And that's why he had to stay in the bubble. It's your immune system that protects you from everything. This world is full of bacterias, viruses. They all mean to kill you. They all mean to take over your entire system. And so your immune system is the only thing that's standing between you and them. So for heaven's sakes, try to build up your immune system by taking vitamins. There's been a lot of studies done on vitamin D. Vitamin D is really great for upper respiratory and respiratory illnesses. Vitamin, uh, vitamin D is a great source of vitamin D is cod liver oil. But here's the thing. You got to be careful with cod liver oil. Uh, that's good for vitamins. Vitamins are really wonderful to help your immune system. But understand this. Vitamins alone will not stop you from catching this virus. They only help your immune system. It's your immune system that keeps you well and helps you to fight off this virus. Because if you don't have an immune system, then you're not going to be able to fight off the virus if your immune system is weak. So if you try to keep your immune system strong by eating a healthy diet, taking your vitamins, getting lots of rest, avoiding stress, and practice social distancing, wash your hands, and wear a mask when you're in a situation where you might be coming in contact with people who have this virus, these are things you need to do on a personal level in order to help you stay well during this epidemic slash pandemic. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Stay tuned and give me a thumbs up and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.